So Ken Lima, who is a founding member of Access to Love, who put a lot of his heart and soul. Um, it's symbolic that he even painted the, the, the sky onto uh, one of the rooms in, in, in our clubhouse. Um, he passed away over the winter holidays. Um, I remember the first time I met Ken, he told me, I'm not going to be here for very long. And I, it kinda, I kind of heard it, but I kind of didn't. Because the years went on and on and on and on, you know, and, and um, I never really expected to say goodbye. And I know all of us being disabled and living in a disabled community, we've encountered this before where we've made quick and great friends with someone who's terminally ill, who, who doesn't have the same life expectancy for whatever reason that you do. And you kind of put it in the back of your head, you know? And I really did that. I kind of put it in the back of my head because I spent, you know, seven years having great fun with Ken. He helped build Access of Love. He was a contributor as well as a member. He did everything he could for everybody anytime he could. He held a seat on the Patient Advocacy Committee for the Medical Cannabis Task Force, bringing a voice to terminally ill patients who obviously aren't going to be going up to the sitting through long meetings and all that kind of stuff. But he brought that voice to the table from a, a direct experience, from a real time, from what was actually going on in his life, which is the best way to have someone help you construct policy that will actually help people's lives. So not only did he do a tremendous amount of service for this dinner, but he did a tremendous amount of service for everybody um, in the patient community in San Francisco that was facing end of life issues by bringing their voice to our table. And he also did hands on direct, and if people could kind of keep the talking down, um, he did hands on direct care of other people that were passing, who was a veteran who was passing away and he would help him with daily things. There wasn't a time when I called Ken when he wasn't doing something for someone else. He kind of, it, it's almost kind of that only the good die young sort of thing where I really felt like he had a very angelic presence and I know many of the people from uh, just the people that have gathered together to kind of um, help this dinner happen every single month for 10 years now. There goes his phone. It always goes off at 420. And there's it's in my pocket. Phone at 420. Yeah. I can't stop paying his phone bill. And today's National Cousins Day. And today's National Cousins Day. And for <laughs> folks that don't know who Ken Lima's cousin is, it's the famous Denise story. So, you know, she is really the reason why Ken was brought to San Francisco and really uh, was able to share his, his service and life with us. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to listen to some of Ken's favorite music while we get you all another slice of pizza. Which was his favorite food. Which was his favorite food. That's Besides why macaroni. Pizza. It was pizza or macaroni and cheese. These are the only things he ate and I'm not even exaggerating for a moment when I say these are the only things he ate. The only things. That's all. That's it. Just pizza. Yeah. Just pizza. And he it and maybe some soda, maybe. And he liked his movies and his cats. This man was the biggest cat lover in the world. So if you take a look at some of the photos that we have in the photo gallery here, you'll see he had these two cats that were huge. I mean, his cat was like, I would say 20 pounds plus. I don't know. which is something that I shared with him. Um, I think we're going to play a little bit of music. Marquis, uh, sure. Is this Facebook account still going? 
Yes. yes. I know you have like a cow and cats and they're so adorable.